Do you pre-wash or not pre-wash your fabrics? That is the question. And one that divides quilters more than any other issue. You need absolute commitment to one side or the other. You either do or you do not. So how do you figure out what side to be on? There are three main reasons to pre-wash your fabrics. Shrinkage, color bleeding, and cleaning. Today I'm going to talk about shrinkage. Stick with me and I'll show you how to do it. Hi there, I'm Karen Brown of Just Get It Done Quilts. I do tips, tricks, and strategies to help you make the quilts that you want to make. And before I get started, I'd like to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. So back in my video, A Really Good Way to Iron, I talked about how cotton is made up of cellulose molecules held together by weak hydrogen bonds. When cotton is processed, it go undergoes heat and pressure and chemicals, and those fibers are put under tension. In the final stages of processing, dye, sizing, and finishing product are applied, and that holds those fibers in that extended state. When we toss them in the washing machine, water lets those fibers relax, or as we often call it, shrink. The hotter the water, the higher the shrinkage. So I decided to make three different quilts to find out how this shrinkage affects our quilting depending on when it happens. The first quilt is made up of entirely unwashed fabrics. I simply cut up the fabrics and sewed them together. It was a simple baby quilt and came together real fast and it finished at 40 inches square. And then I free motion quilted. The second quilt, I made the top with unwashed fabric, but then I washed the, the flimsy as a whole before I quilted it. So now I'm just gonna take it downstairs and get it washed. I sewed a basting stitch around the outside of the flimsy at one eighth of an inch to stop the fraying. Not surprisingly, it shrank, but I was honestly surprised at how much it actually did shrink. But not only did it shrink, the cotton threads that I sewed it together with shrunk, and that caused a bowing of the quilt top. And this gave me some grief while I was long arming it. And the third quilt, I pre-washed all the fabrics. Now the immediate downside to using pre-washed fabrics was it took extra time. And of course they had to be ironed because they were very crinkly. The second one was that the fabric, because I use a lot of fat quarters, there was a lot of fraying along the edges and with the re shrinkage, some of the pieces were now too small for me to use my pattern. I had to flip a couple of fabrics around and I had to alter how I actually cut out the fabrics. I chose not to add back in any starch because the fabric did still have a lot of body to it. I have quilt number two and quilt number three lined up here on the long arm and you can see the difference in size in the first stage. So this is quilt number one. I free motion quilted it. So in this phase, we seem to have lost about a half an inch from the width and a little more than three quarters from the height. I wouldn't have expected that with free motion quilting, but so be it. It's bright and it's pretty. This is the one where the flimsy was washed and then it's been long armed as a whole. So you can see how there was a lot of puckering in a couple of places on this quilt. And I found there was some, like my borders are not straight. I had to make a decision whether I was going to square it or keep the borders even. That was two inches on this side. And this is an inch and a half on the top that we've lost. I was pleasantly surprised about the pre-washed quilt. Now this one, this one's pre-washed fabrics. So again, it's really interesting how much shrinkage happens just in the quilting phase. I seem to have lost the square on this a bit. But definitely a quarter of an inch and another quarter, half an inch there. The colors of the fabric are a bit washed out compared to quilt number one, but it's a soft palette, so it really doesn't make a huge difference. But what I really enjoyed was working with the softness of the quilt. So there's one more wash that we need to make. 
As we saw in the flimsy, the cotton threads shrink, plus we have the cotton batting that needs to shrink. So we're gonna wash them all one more time and see what the crinklefication is like between the three quilts. So this is the settings I'm putting them on. I'm putting them on a normal wash, which is probably overkill since they're not dirty. I always do an extra rinse because I feel with these high efficiency machines, they need an extra rinse to get the detergent out and of course doing an extra spin. I've kept it on warm, high, and normal. And while that's cleaning, I'd like to tell you about today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is a learning community for creators with over 25,000 classes in design, crafting, business, and others. With back to school, you might be wanting to learn a new skill too. Premium membership gives you unlimited access to all their classes and communities so you can find one that suits your goals. Last month was a challenging one for me, and this class by Mike Boyd grabbed my attention. It's all about goal setting, learning new skills more efficiently. There's a section called the brain dip, and it might enlighten some of you on why you abandon projects before the end. If you want to fuel your creativity, your curiosity, or your career, Skillshare is the perfect place to keep you learning and thriving in 2019. Skillshare is less than $10 a month for an annual subscription, so it's super affordable. Use the link in the description box below to get a two-month free trial. Join more than 7 million creators learning with Skillshare. So this is the first and only wash that these fabrics have had so far. And there is a loss of three inches on both top and side, which is a loss in area of 15%. This is the second wash for the fabrics in this quilt, and as you can see, I'm still dealing with this bowing in this quilt. Similar to quilt number one, I've lost about three inches on both sides. The 15% loss is the same as quilt number one. This is also the second wash for the fabrics of quilt number three. The shrinkage is less on this one. It's only two inches per side. This loss is only 10%, which is the best out of all three. I took a moment to stack all the quilts on top of one another just to see the comparison. Okay, so if crinklefication is not a real word, it should be. We all have personal taste on how much we like our quilts to crinkle. Quilt number one definitely crinkled the most, and the extra crinkles were very forgiving for any of my free motion quilting mistakes. The crinkles in quilt number two were my least favorite of the three. I think it all stems from that original shrinkage, which caused the quilt to pucker and bow. Quilt number three was the least crinkled of the three quilts. And it had a soft, smooth, even flat touch. I'm a fat quarter buyer and I almost always buy from my stash first. So in the future, if I did this, I would not only have to choose the color and choose the pattern, I would also have to check to see the size of the fat quarter quarter to be sure that after shrinkage there was still enough to be able to use it. I would still not pre-wash any jelly rolls or charm packs because between the fraying and the shrinkage they just really wouldn't be usable after that. So there you have it. We all have our own priorities based on our own situations so choose what's best for you pre-wash or not pre-wash. And most of all, let's be kind to the other side because we're not at war. And based on what I've discovered today, I may choose to visit them sometimes. I hope you've enjoyed this video today. Take a moment to take a gander at some of my other videos. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. You can also click on this circle with my face in it and subscribe that way. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram at Just Get It Done Quilts. And don't forget to visit my website. So take care and I'll see you next time.